Dice Tower Tonight, episode 34. Happy holidays! Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, we're in holiday recovery mode, and we get to find out if there were any games under our respective trees. Tom will attempt to stump Crystal and me with his devious games, and we'll chat about some we got to the table recently, and we'll discuss the pros and uh, take your questions live. I'm Eric Summerer. Joining me now, the Ebenezer Scrooge to our ghosts of Christmas past and present, Tom Vassell. Okay, I'll accept that. Someone's got to rein in the nonsense. What um, nonsense? You didn't tune in the last couple of weeks, did you? <laughs> so, <laughs> we have a list of new rules. Wait, <laughs> Wait what? what? Rules. rules? No, 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 we don't. I didn't get any games for Christmas, Eric. What are you talking about? I, I got Pandemic Fall of Rome. My wife got me that. And she also got me some like uh, adults-only game called Choking Hazard. Have you heard of this? It's it's from a, like a comic strip. And I'm sort of uh, terrified. Do you mean Joking Hazard? Joking Hazard. That's it. I thought, he said, I thought he said Choking Hazard. <laughs> I think I it, thought, too. I may have said Choking Hazard. It's, it's a very joking different hazard. sort of game, I believe. No, Choking <laughs> Hazard is based on... Um, uh, a, a fairly Night and Happiness. Night and Happiness, which is a fairly yeah. adult comic, yes. Yeah. Uh, and Joking Hazard, from what I understand, gives you some panels of a comic, which apparently can be rearranged in pretty much any order because they're all nonsensical. And you put two of them out, and then everyone puts out the third one, and the funniest third one wins. That's that's the idea. But but we looked at a few cards, and yes, this is a like top shelf. Uh, I think you should play with your kids. Don't <laughs> leave it out for the children at all. Yeah. Definitely not. But yeah, I've been in a, doing a family game day all day. So we've been playing games with the relatives. And my, my mom taught Reef to all of her sisters. And uh, we played one of the exit scenarios. And oh, we just played Bonanza. Which was a lot of fun. All right, Crystal, what about you? Um, well, so my birthday was the week before Christmas and then Christmas. I, um, my, my best gift was a combo that was not a board game, but is gaming related. And I'll say that in a second. Uh, my secret Santa for my game group got me this, the, oh gosh, it's shiny because it still has the plastic on it. The escape room in a box. <laughs> I see my stuff in the box. <laughs> <laughs> escape room in a box. There, it's a little less shiny when I hold it from that weird angle. Um, and then my friend Greg... Uh, also got me Alien Artifacts, which I've never nice. played, but I'm pretty excited about because I like space and I like 4X games and I've heard that this is both. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the coolest gift that I got, because my birthday and Christmas are at the same time, uh, my husband used that as an excuse to get me a very big uh, gaming-related thing that I'd wanted for a long time, and that is an Oculus Rift. So... I have spent the past like four days in a virtual world and like I'm only coming out for brief gasps of real world air and it is so amazing. I love it. I've been playing Beat Saber and uh, Rick and Morty Virtual Reality and uh, an, an adventure game of that I don't remember the name of now. I'm Oh my gosh. I love it so much. It's the best. Fantastic. Uh, I got a vest. And <laughs> I got a tie, and I got a hat, and I got socks. That's great. That is great. Very pleased with my gifts. I got no games, and I shed no tears. It's almost a break. It's a vacation for you to not get games. No, I don't mind getting games, uh, but I would never, ever, like, what would, someone buy me a game, it'd be like the worst job. <laughs> get him something he doesn't have. And something he'll like. Because you can do the first one pretty easily. Um, so let's talk about some games. Yes. Oh, my parents game. got me the mind. That's cool, too. Ooh. This is a tournament of towers. Now, you can't tell, but this box is quite heavy. And so I just played this game like 20 minutes ago. That's why it's on my mind. Uh, this game comes with a bunch of cards. And at the beginning of each round... You will draft seven cards, and these cards show various shapes. And these come with, this is your base, and this is pretty heavy. Okay, it's a pretty oh. heavy thing. And then you're going to be placing the shapes on top of it. After you're done drafting, you're going to put all these shapes 
in a row and put them on your tower. And you'll get three points if your tower is the tallest. And then you get one point for each golden piece. The golden pieces are ridiculously shaped things. Um, this here is the most annoying shape I've ever put on a, a device. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's a cube. With, with a circle. I don't know how to put it. I mean, yes, it fits perfectly in the pipe. Okay. But if you don't have the pipe, <laughs> I, hate, I hate my life. <laughs> so these pieces are really high quality, and the game is okay. The reason I don't like it so much, it's okay, because you're drafting and putting these pieces on. That's not that new of an, of an idea. The only thing that's really new here is that this box is just chock full of pieces. You know, there's all these, look at all those pieces. That's, I mean, it's a, so it's, there's a lot of pieces in the box. So, but, and this drafting thing sounds interesting, but you really could get stuck with a couple pieces, which you just can't put in your tower. And when your tower falls, you can fix it one time. But if it falls twice, you lose the game. Like you lose the whole game. Wow. I'm not so keen on that. Uh, other than that, you play two rounds and then you add your scores on this really expensive pad. Um, which you are literally writing down scores from two games and adding them. I don't think the pad was necessary at all. <laughs> whatever. It's a guess. It's just a weird thing. But also, whoever builds they and the rules are like whoever builds the tallest tower. Oh, the winner isn't always the person with the tallest tower, but it almost always is. I mean, they might as well have said that because tallest tower is three points. Each gold piece is one point. So if you build like a tall tower and put one or two gold pieces on, it's five points. I'm not putting five gold pieces on mine to counteract that. You know, it's just not going to happen. So anyway, it's okay. Definitely a mass market and definitely some, I don't know. It's okay. You could uh, cannibalize some of those pieces and put them into junk art, but then you'd need cards for them. I have to say, I like junk art a lot. I think the pieces in this game almost rivaled the coolness of what I thought with junk art. I do feel... I might be wrong, but I would put a lot of money down on the fact that the people who designed this game had a 3D printer, and they were just messing around printing out pieces until yeah. they found the ones they liked, and then they had them made from plastic. Because that's what these what pieces the these pieces feel like. Someone got a 3D printer and wanted to make some cool stuff. <laughs> you could use it for game shows at uh, future live events. Oh, no. We'll be using... Uh, let, me, let me... Okay, let me have some correct pronunciation here so that people are clear on what I'm saying. But at Dice Tower West, we're going to do the first ever annual Spiky Dastards. <laughs> so Dastards uh, are people who are dastardly. Uh, this was featured in one of your recent top 10 lists where you and Sam and Z were all grabbing them and injuring yourselves and it was hilarious to watch. <laughs> well, it's going to be even more in person, especially when the Murph brothers are involved. Oh, oh boy. They are a couple of dastards. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> do you have any comments? <laughs> anyway, uh, anyone else have a game they brought with them? I do. Um, so it's funny you mentioned drafting because my game involves that as well. This is Boomerang. It's a new one from Scott Alms and Grail Games. You know, you it's, couldn't um, play this with me at PAX, but you were too busy playing on uh, Switch. I, I'm sorry to hear that. It was a fun game on the Switch that we played, but I can't remember what it was called. It was something about, like, s snipping or... Snipper or, clips. Snipper clips. That's it. Right. Anyway. <laughs> um, in Boomerang, uh, it, is, it is a drafting and writing game. Everybody gets one of these maps of Australia. Hello. And your object is to visit as many little locations as you can, uh, which are like all tourist locations in Australia. And here's what the cards look like. They look like this. Uh, they have uh, like a location that you're going to mark off on the map, but they also have other um, symbols. So there's activity symbols, and there's some animal symbols, and there's some... Um, also, some souvenir symbols. And you're going to go through a drafting round, basically. You you take your seven cards. You're all dealt out. You put one of them face down. That is your first drafted card. And then you pass the rest. Then you choose another. Yes? You have a question, sir? No, you just paused for a while. So I was joining you. Oh, okay. Um, so you, uh, you then draft. You just go through a drafting round. Now, 
the first and last cards that you draft are important because the first card that you put down face down is your throw because you're throwing a boomerang. You throw the first card and then the last card that gets drafted back to you uh, that you have no choice over really comes back to you. And if it is higher than or equal to the number on your thrown card, then you've managed to catch it and you'll get points equal to what that throw card was. So if I throw out a four as my first card, and I get a five back as the last drafted card, I get four points. Awesome. Uh, you also get points for those um, animals. You can make pairs. Uh, those souvenirs you get points for, but you have to increase your score each round in order to continue to score points. Otherwise, you get a zero in a round. Um, those activity symbols you can score. It goes on like a kind of a tree structure, a little chart, um, but you can only score each one of them once. Uh, there are bonuses for the different sections. If I complete one quadrant of, of Australia, then I get three bonus points. Those are points that the others can't get. Uh, so the whole thing finishes up with you, you know, writing all over the map and you're crossing off your spaces and, uh, and, and totaling it all up. And whoever has the most points after five rounds wins. Um, I enjoyed it. It's certainly a fast-paced, simple drafting game. Um, it's a lot to keep track of. Um, because there's just so many symbols on each card is a location. It's also got maybe an activity symbol and a uh, an animal symbol and trying to look at what you're giving to the people to your left that you're going to pass the cards to is, is quite difficult because while you're focusing on an activity symbol and not wanting to give them too many swimming pictures, you're totally missing the fact that they you're giving them a second koala, which is going to earn them points. Um, so it seems a little haphazard, but that's fine. I'm okay with that for such a light game. Um, it, the presentation is nice. It comes with little pencils to, to fill out the forms and everything. Um, I, I think it's, it's nice. It's solid. Um, Boomerang from Grail Games. I like it. Um, all right, should I go with to my game? Please do. Ta-da! I finally got to play Duel of Thor Island, the new standalone two-player uh, game from Pandasaurus Games, the makers of Dinosaur Island. So I had not played uh, Dinosaur Island <laughs> um, until. Oh man, mine doesn't say Extreme Edition on it. Oh, like, what does that mean? <laughs> that means she backed the Kickstarter. I backed the Kickstarter. So the Extreme Edition comes with additional cards and components. Uh, I didn't punch all of the Extreme ones out yet. I punched out this one, but there's like extra tokens, and then there's other cards, and these tokens go with some of those cards. Um, but so uh, I had not played Dinosaur Island until this past March, so I didn't get in on the first Kickstarter of Dinosaur. Played it at MeepleCon, now Dice Tower West, and then when they launched the new Kickstarter over the summer, I backed for Dinosaur Island with the Totally Liquid expansion and Duelasaur Island. I have not played with the Totally Liquid expansion for Dinosaur Island yet, so I don't have any opinions on it yet, but I have played Duelasaur now. This is a pretty cool two-player implementation of Dinosaur Island. And I, I've never played Dinosaur Island two-player. Um, I've heard it's actually fine with two players, but this is a smaller footprint game that's a little faster to set up and obviously faster to play. Um, so you have player boards similar to the ones in Dinosaur Island uh, where you're keeping track of your DNA. You have six different types of DNA that you can acquire. Um, and these are the nice little inset boards that the cubes sit in so very lovely. Uh, you've got your threat level, and you've got your security level. These are all very similar to what people have seen in Dinosaur Island. You're paying for higher security to keep uh, dinosaurs from eating the people in your park. Um, the end game scoring is also kind of similar. You're looking for the number of visitors in your park to be, uh, once you hit a certain level, depending on whether you've chosen a short, medium, or long game, once someone hits that number of visitors, you play one more round and keep going. Um, and the ways that you earn money and visitors um, are via cards. So the cards are all multi-use. So each card has a dinosaur at the top and then something else at the bottom, either a food stand, a merch stand, or an attraction. And like, so this one has a dino burger stand on it. So it's a food stand. So that will earn you extra money if you have that in your park. Uh, this one is a little photo booth. Merch cards will uh, allow you to draw additional cards in subsequent rounds. So it'll give you more flexibility in what you can build. Um, and then attractions, which are this one, have a little roller coaster symbol on them, and they will allow you to take actions from the 
public relations track. The PR track is at the top of this board and uh, there will be a little token on it showing which ones you can do and which ones you can't. And basically it just gives you additional ways to collect DNA, money, and cards. So all of the things spiral into each other, money, cards, DNA. Uh, the dinosaurs are what earn you your up your uh, excitement level, which will get you more visitors every round. And the person with the highest score at the end wins. Um, I honestly, I like this quite a bit. I don't, I kind of wish it was a little bit faster to play, but I've only played it the once. And so since it was a learning game, I think it would speed up uh, in subsequent plays. Um, and we also messed up the setup and that's not the rule book's fault. We just missed something when we were going over it, which did slow the game down in the beginning. Um, but the rule book is pretty decent and the gameplay is fun. If you like the feel of Dinosaur Island and you want something that doesn't take a long time to set up, I think this one is great. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far and I'm excited to play it more. So that is Dualasaur Island, the extreme edition that Tom doesn't have. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not playing my piece of garbage now. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think this works as an introduction to Dinosaur Island? I, I both are sitting on my two-play pile. Which one should I go to first? Should I go for the, the two-player oh, distilled version? Mention, or is... So I didn't even mention the coolest part of this. Um, which So in regular Dinosaur Island, the primary mechanic is a worker placement game. You're placing workers on things to gain stuff. In this one, it's a dice and card drafting to gain your materials. And the dice, just like in Dinosaur Island, are big and chunky. I can't really show them off. Whoa, there goes one of them. Don't break anything. Nah, it's just my keyboard. It's fine. They're like big chunky dice and they've got DNA. But what's neat is all of the dice are unique and they all have different things on them. So that will kind of lend itself to the answer to your question. Um, I think this one is more approachable just because it's less sprawling. I think Dinosaur Island is not a difficult game to learn and play, but there's like the phase one board and the phase two board and the phase three board and your player board and everything is all spread out and massive looking. And so I think Dinosaur Island can be intimidating for new players just because of this like it's so much to look at. This one is a very small footprint comparatively. Um, and I think the dice drafting is pretty easy. One player sets, rolls the dice and sets them based on some bonuses that are on the board. And then the other player drafts one thing first and then it goes back and forth. Um, so I think this actually would be a good way to introduce people to the dinosaur island world and dice drafting or card drafting in general, just because it's back and forth two players. Hmm. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, I think this would be, this is a better one to start with. Um, and a lot of the things will bleed over. Cause like I was able to learn this more easily because I know Dinosaur Island and I feel like it would go back the other direction as well. The whole, the threat level, your security level, your excitement level, all of those things felt very familiar to me when I played this. Like we, again, I said we messed up something in the setup, but that was just because we missed it in the rule book. Um, but like, as we were going through the rules, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Like, I felt like I kind of already knew this game, even though I'd never played it before. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it would help with people learning Dinosaur Island. Uh, and honestly, it's just a shorter play time too. So <laughs> show them this. And if they like it, say, Hey, you want more? I got more. <laughs> All right, so we talked briefly about some good games. I just want to quick do a shout out to a game I gave a one to. Oh boy! You and don't it was a game that I had. I don't. But this game, here's the thing. I was getting this. I was messing with this game today uh, because even though I knew it was horrible, I thought I'll use some of the cards tonight in our game show. And then after, just I was so mad at the game. Um, it's, it's such a bad game. So it's it's the seventh guest board game. Oh, oh, I've heard about this. <laughs> it's really bad. Now, the seventh guest, did either of you play that? Yes! I, I mean, it scared the bejeez out of me. But oh, I, I'm like, right there with you. But I, no, I loved the point and click adventure games Mist, Riven, Zork, all of that stuff from like, that was what I spent my young life doing, basically. <laughs> well, the seventh guest was a video game. It was, I believe, the first or second video game. With that was on uh, a was a DVD CD. or CD? CD. CD CD ROM. CD ROM, right? It was that or missed. I can't remember which one came out first, but it had some video clips on it. And I still remember you're in this house going up this, and all of a sudden there was this painting, and his hand just was like, Rawr. and I almost turned the game off and never played again. <laughs> but the game itself, there was the whole game. I can't remember what it was, um, but you kept coming into these different puzzles that you have to solve. 
And so I'd never played anything like this before. Now I would just, I would go, oh yeah, this is typical. But it, it did seem weird to me that I was in a haunted house trying to connect wires in a different way or play an abstract strategy game. Uh, this game, uh, you are running around a haunted house by rolling a die and moving as far as the die tells you to move. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Wait, I'm missing something. <laughs> table <laughs> reference. A, a former member of the Dice Tower Network of podcasts that you can check out at dicetowernetwork.com, including the entire back catalog of Flip the Table. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Just keep blinking, Tom. Don't, it's, the video's not switching back over to you because you aren't saying anything, so. So, anyhow, that's problematic. You can also land on spots that give you special cards if you ever land on one. And then these cards can do things like just steal stuff from other people, switch places. But you're going to a location. Each person draws a location card. You have to go to that location card. Why are you going to that location? Because if you go there, then someone else will draw a puzzle card. They'll give you a puzzle. You solve the puzzle, and you have to solve a certain number of puzzles, and you win the game. If you don't solve the puzzle, you sit in that room until you do. The board is literally just a way to make you spend time between solving puzzles. There is no other reason that this board exists. These puzzles, <laughs> it's the worst collection of puzzles ever made in humanity. Uh, they come with the, that red stuff in the background. You use the little magnifying glass to see it that you used to get in Captain Crunch boxes to find out that Captain Crunch was on Mars. Red lens technology. Yes. Thank you, Robot Eric. Um, <laughs> The uh, and and so if you don't know, you can ask for a hint. And why would you not ask for a hint? You might ask because then on your journey to your next room, you are minus one for each hint you asked for, which you just have to remember. But no one cares because the rolling of a die moving around the board is hideous to begin with. So the problem is some of these are puzzles that are essentially stolen from math tests, like an example. You're in a room, Eric. You're trapped in the attic. You notice there's some uh, some cockroaches and rats running around. You count 48 legs and 23 eyes. You know how many cockroaches and how many rats are there? 14 and 2. Okay, so thanks, Robot Eric. But that is that's <laughs> like stuff you need a paper and pencil for. But the clues are hilarious. I mean, and some of the questions are just trivia questions. They'll be like, well, which one of these is not one of the houses in Harry Potter? And then they'll give you multiple choice, which seems a little bit easier than counting cockroach and rat legs. Um, and so there's these questions, but they have these, sometimes they'll ask a question and they'll show a picture of the answer on the card, which I think is supposed to be a background picture but it's the actual answer. Like one that they said was um, MC squared equals plus okay. And so the, the answer was eyes because MC squared equals E and okay is another word for yes. E plus yes is eyes. That would have been good, except on the card, there's a picture of a guy with his eyes highlighted. The clues are even better. I got one that was a mathematical puzzle type where they're like, you have 11 cookies and one of these, or uh, it was nine cookies, nine cookies, and one of the cookies is poison. That one weighs a little bit more than the other cookies. You have a scale and you're allowed to use the scale three times. How do you narrow it down to which cookie it is? So I was like, oh, okay, and I'm mathematical. I was like, okay, give, give me a hint. And the first hint was, you can weigh more than one cookie at a time on the scale. I was like, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Give me another clue. So clue two was you don't have to always put equal numbers on both sides of the scale. I was like, oh, thanks. And, and the clues are ridiculous in that regard. Sometimes the, the, the one that, for example, that was eyes. The clue for that was some people are mocked as having four of these. If you don't get that automatically, I, I don't know. There was one I was looking at today, which cracked me up, and it was, what Three's company character 
if you add two letters to their name, becomes a famous criminal from the, I don't know, 1600s or whenever this criminal existed, 1800s. And uh, so it's, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a threes company guy. That's Eric. And I don't know. So on the, so I, I, I look at hint number one and hint number one was, we hope you know 70s uh, sitcoms and murder trivia. That's not a hint. Yeah. Well, and the, the previous hint that you said was a hint toward the answer, but wasn't actually a hint about the puzzle. Like you're supposed to hint about the puzzle, not the answer. Like that's it's just really, there's one question today that I couldn't figure out, uh, but in, until you had to look at it from like a sideway, it's, it's bad. It's just really bad. By the way, that's Jack the Ripper because it's Jack Tripper, but you add H E after the T and it's Jack the Ripper. Uh, and you'd think that would be obvious. Uh, so when this game was on Kickstarter, like back in 2017, I saw it and I went, oh my gosh, I love the seventh guest. They're making a board game about it. And then I looked at the Kickstarter and I was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, I didn't not- realize this was on Kickstarter. I'm just looking at it now. 61,000. <laughs> I, I will admit, I am one of those people that does like fall into the nostalgia trap occasionally. And that is one of the reasons I backed the Homestar Runner board game, even though I know it's going to be garbage because I just want all those Homestar Runner minis and I don't care. Uh, <laughs> but this one I did not do. It's awful. So I didn't bring any of those questions for our game show today, but I have questions. So right. time, time for the last game show. Last game of uh, 2018. All right. So you at home can play along, keep your own score. See if you're closer. If you're closer to the answers than Crystal or Eric, you can give yourself a point. So we're going to start with some number answers. So it's the closest to it, not the closest without going over because that's nonsense. Just the closest to the correct answer. So Crystal will go first and answer these. So I went to the board game geek database and I did a search for games that have the word new year in them or new years. How many listings? I won't say games, but I'm gonna say games for, from now on, but when I say games, I mean listings, which could include expansions and or promotional items. Okay. How um, many have the words new year or new years in them? I'm gonna guess 207. 207. All right. Eric. I'll guess. I'm actually going to make a guess rather than just go above or below. <laughs> I'm going to guess 75. All right. After we answer this, Eric, I would suggest restarting. <laughs> <laughs> the robot thing is funny, but. <laughs> so just out of curiosity, Crystal, could you name any game that has the word New Year's in it? No, but I also can't name how many listings are there on Board Game Geek. It's like what fifty, like it's thousand, fifty thousand or something like that. Sure, and you think two hundred and seven of them? The answer know. is three. <laughs> so Eric wins it, but ah, uh, anyone who guessed lower than seventy-five gets a point. But I'll give Eric a, I'll give Eric five points for that. All right, we'll restart, Eric. We'll wait for you. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> and now the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> you know while he's gone i'll look up like so in my mind i was kind of like thinking about like civ type games that and i know that there are a lot of those and so i was like maybe there's a bunch of expansions like oh, here are the three games okay one is baby new year kidnapping i don't even know what that means uh, let me go look at the description Someone stole the baby. Come meet the recently divorced Santa, accompanied by his new gal, Candy Cane. Move over Hugh Hefner as Jelly Bean pays tribute to the Easter Bunny. Halloween is represented by Jill and Jack O' Lantern, and of course, you get to meet our Thanksgiving pilgrims, the Standishes, Miles and his famous wife, Lucky. So get out your life jackets and hop aboard the USS Festival. And help find the missing baby New Year. Bon voyage. I'm making my nope face right now, but I have to talk so the chat can see it. <laughs> New. Ah. 
The other one was Happy New Year. This came out in 1960 and has one vote. And then there's one Bacchus's Banquet New Year Celebration. That also has one vote, came out in 2014. I'm actually kind of surprised that there aren't more like something, something, a new year or the new years or whatever. Like, it feels like, I don't know. Wait, now I'm a robot, people are saying? You you have gone robot a couple of times, but only like a little bit. So it's, it wasn't as bad as Eric's. It's been, it's mostly not. It's mo you're mostly fine. Uh, well, just one of those nights. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Where's Eric? How long does it take to come back? Well, maybe he restarted his whole computer. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. So what's your... Okay. So this escape room in a box, the werewolf experiment. You played the other, like, a different version of it, right? It's, it's the same thing. It's The reason that they had to remake some of it is because some of the stuff that they did was not mass marketable. Uh -oh. Right? You know, they, they were hand making all the ones, I'm pretty sure. The ones that were originally on Kickstarter. Yeah, so there's some interesting things in the the Kickstarter one, which aren't in that one, but then that one had some neat things that were not in the Kickstarter one. I okay. Think. It, it, it balances out. Yeah. I, um, like, just seeing, so it says the contents, paper puzzles, non-paper puzzles, two boxes with locks, one jar with a lock, a hints book, an answers book, and accessories. And then it says it includes three batteries. But what's interesting is I don't actually know what the batteries are for just based on the contents listing. So I'm pretty excited to try it out. Now that one is a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I'm excited about that one. I, I've played the one I'm most excited about. I haven't got yet. Um, it's, oh, okay. this is a pet peeve of mine. Like, okay. what? I don't know if this is possible to like, it says dispose of battery and then in parentheses, I-E-S, safely. Like, why didn't it just say dispose of batteries safely? Oh, you can't even, I think it's blurry. Yeah, it's, it says battery and then in, like the full word battery and then in parentheses, I-E-S. Just say dispose of batteries safely, people. <laughs> okay, here's the one I want to get that it hasn't come. It's called Simul Simulacra Games, the Wilson Wolf Affair. The Wilson Wolf Affair. Yeah, oh. so this one is... It, it looks, it's this big box that comes with all this memorabilia. So there's like um, old cartoons, newspaper clippings. I mean, a ton of stuff from the early days of animation. But when you look at things, there might be something else underneath the surface. And so you got to figure out what it is. I'm super pumped about this. Uh, I keep getting updates about it that I ignore because until the game comes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Their last update said, we're close to being done. Well, no kidding. <laughs> Ooh, and that one's not a was not a cheap one when it was on Kickstarter. <clears throat> it was 80, not. 80 bucks um, but the smallest pledge level. Did I do the smallest pledge level? That's not the point. Um, <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I really wanted to do the biggest pledge level because it comes with a Viewmaster. And I just really wanted a Viewmaster. I, I mean, thought that would be a really cool thing. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I hadn't actually heard about this one. I'm usually, like, I don't back a ton of Kickstarters, but I'm usually pretty knowledgeable, and I missed this one, apparently. Well, it's probably for the best, since it's <laughs> taking a while um, yeah. to come. And uh, I'll let you know if I like it. I mean, it looks fun, but I'm all, the only thing that concerns me about these is, is there a way to progress if you get stuck? Like, I'm going to just sit there and am I, am I, can I solve it? I don't know. All right, Mr. Summer, did, did, did something happen? I'll check my phone. I'm giving that all, everyone in chat gets an extra two points for Eric's tardiness. <laughs> the, uh, the chat enjoyed playing against Eric in, in our last episode. Did you get a chance to check that out after we did it? I did not. So I actually had the chat playing against Eric directly. Um, or no, not not against him, with him. So we were playing uh, Just One, the, that new board game um, that came out not too long ago where you're writing words on the little whiteboards. Yes. So, but I what I did is I had the chat uh, say like the first like six responses 
were the ones that I counted as being on whiteboards. And if any of them matched, then they got eliminated and I didn't read them to Eric. And oh, I, had yeah, I heard that worked pretty well. Yeah, it was really, really fun. I would, and I didn't, I don't actually own a copy of just one yet. I will probably pick one up at some point, but I literally just like, I uh, drew the words onto pieces of paper and just showed them to the camera while Eric was not looking. Um, and it worked out well. We're going to have someone play for Eric. So the first answer will be Eric's answer. Okay. So continuing on our theme of holidays and games. So New Year's, there was only three games. How many game or game entries have Christmas in the title somewhere? Okay, it will be more than three, but not that many. I will go with 13. 13, says Crystal. All right, so, oh, the first person in the audience said 455. All right, so let's see which one's closer. Oh, it's Crystal, 123. Okay. So, you actually may have heard of the number one ranked game. I'll give you bonus points if you can guess it. It came out in 2017. No looking it up on the computer, Chief. No, I've, I've got my hands. Uh... <laughs> no, you don't have to show your hands. We, if you say you're not cheating, we will believe you. <laughs> I'm not that surreptitious. Like, if I was cheating, you'd know. I'd be like, mm, like, I'll lean into the side or something. Like, you'd see. Um I remember you talking about this one. And now I see, okay, well, now I can see the answer in the chat. So I can't. Time has run out. No cheating yeah. from the chat. I'm so, I, I could have just said it and I didn't. I'm not but a cheater. Did Christmas tree. All right. Now I'll let you guess it. The second one, the number two, is a very popular game, colon, special Christmas edition. You may not have even, well, I don't know if you know this game or not, but this is a game. Uh, that teenagers and kids tend to enjoy and has sold million plus copies for sure. Uh, teenagers and something the special Christmas edition. Well, I'm not going to say Monopoly, obviously, because you wouldn't have put it like that if that were the case. Teenagers is what like kids like bunches of things. Well, I had great success playing it with teenagers. Okay. Uh... But I personally dislike the game. Dislike the game. Mostly because teenagers whoop me around the block on it. Cranium? That is a good guess, but it is actually Holly Golly. Special Christmas edition. I've never Have heard ever... of that. Well, about 10 years ago, Holly Golly was all the rage. Oh. Um, I'm sorry. Hang on. I got to do that again. Well, about 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, I was uh, laid off from the recession and broke. So I was Holly not Golly is like a little card game that comes with a bell and you're flipping cards over. And if you see seven of the same fruit on the table, you hit the bell and then you, you get the cards or you give your cards up or I forget which one it is. All right. So we've done Christmas. What's next? You might wonder. Halloween. I'm going to text Eric because I'm starting to worry now. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything on my phone from him. Um, so games with the word Halloween in the titles? Yes. Uh, I will say... This is Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Listings. And I know that, like, I know there's a King of Tokyo Halloween expansion. Uh, well, people went first and the first answer was 44. Ooh. Well, I was going to definitely go in, somewhere around in that range. I will say... 21. Ooh. You are slightly closer than the uh, than Eric. It's 31. Ooh, okay. Now, what is the highest rated listing of Halloween games? I mean, I would guess the King of Tokyo Halloween experience. That's bonus points for Crystal! <laughs> Man, Eric, you suck! <laughs> <laughs> what What's happening? Dude, did you go have lunch? <laughs> no, my computer is super slow. <laughs> All right. Well, Crystal has beaten you in the last two questions. Oh, good. The, the chat, was, the the chat was playing for you. The chat was playing for me. Great. Thanks, All right, so chat. Just to catch you up, there are three games with New Year's, 123 with Christmas, and 31 with Halloween. Which holiday is next? That's Easter. How many entries on Board Game Geek have Easter in the title? Eric, you're first. All right, so they've been going down that we're talking about? 
No, they've been going up. No, it was three, 123 and 31. Oh, I, okay. I did not do these in any numerical order. I did them in the order I thought of the holidays. Easter. Uh, let's say 26. All right, Crystal. I will go with eight. Crystal's closer. The answer is 16. Oh. However, bonus points to the first person who can guess the highest rated game with the word Easter in the title. Easter Island. Eric gets it. Easter Island oh, is correct. Back. All right. Next. Valentine. Crystal, you're you first. Little, you got a little robot-y, but I think that was Valentine's Day? That was Valentine. I am oh, looking Valentine. for love. Uh, yeah, not, not Valentine's Day. Just Valentine is fine. Valentine. Okay. I'm going to say five. I'll, right. go with, I'll go with 11. Eric gets double points because 11 is exactly right. Woo! Also, I'm really creeped out by the fact that the first two answers in the chat were five and 11, respectively. But like, it came right after we said them, and that's real creepy. <laughs> that maybe because one of them looked it up online and is cheating. I don't know, man. The, the, the delay, I feel like they wouldn't have had time. The <laughs> highest ranked Valentine game is Resident Evil deck building game, Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine promo. Uh, <laughs> I would never have gotten that. Nope. After that, though, is Munchkin Valentine's. Uh, Be My Valentine, a game that came out in 2015. It has six ratings. And Tanks, the Valentine Tank expansion. Scrabble Valentine's Day. Uno, a Charlie Brown Valentine. And Help Star Swirl find a Valentine's Day picnic. Okay, next one is Thanksgiving. Crystal, you're first. I was first last time. <laughs> Eric, you're first. Uh, eight. Crystal. Two. Crystal's correct. There is only three entries. Ooh. Thanksgiving Jingo, the Thanksgiving game, and the Great Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade game. That is actually an interesting theme for a game. I'm not mad at that one. Well, I'm not mad at it either. Why would you be mad? No, like, that's just a phrase. Like, I'm not mad at it. Like, I it came know. out in 2003. And, uh, it's a yeah, really it looks, slow rolling move. It looks really <laughs> horrible. <laughs> parade floats sounds interesting in concept, though. So, somebody out there design a good parade float management game. All you right. Have to let's find get people off, to hold the balloons down. Let's get off holidays. How many entries are there? According to Board Game Geek, that came out in the year 2018. Total. Oh, no. That's Gosh. right. Now, of course, this isn't going to just be games. This, again, includes expansions and different promos that are separate categories. But still. Uh, am I first this time, then? You are first. Okay. I'm going to guess... 3,175. All right, Eric. I'm going to go lower and say 2,100. The answer is 4,090. Oh. Holy moly. That is a lot. I would say that's too many. <laughs> Speaking of which, how many titles in the Board Game Geek database have the phrase too many in them? Nice segue. That's an actual real segue because I thought that and looked it up. <laughs> All right, Eric, you get to go first this time. Well, I mean, there are at least a bunch of too many Bones products. All right, I'm not so asking the bonus question now. Thanks a lot, Eric. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll say 26. Uh, I'm going to go, I don't know how many too many bones products there are, but there aren't going to be a lot of other too many. So I'm going to say 13. There's actually 24. So I was going to ask what the number one game was, but that's too many bones. Too many bones. 
But okay, so I'll ask you what the number two game is by number of people owning it. So 2,075 owned too many bones. How many? 1,013 owned the next one. It's I got not too many bones, the, the, the riptide or whatever that is. No, it has nothing to do with bones. Oh. Too many. Too many cooks? Yes, too many that's cooks. It. Wait, wait, that's a real thing? I was that's making it. A no, that's a good, it's a great card game. Yeah, it's actually a good card game. And the third one, which you may not have played, it came out in 2014 and I reviewed it, is Too Many Cinderella's. Yes, well, I had that one. That. There's also One Too Many, which is another name for stack robots. Too Many Monkeys, which I've also played. And the very last one, which has no rankings and no reviews and no one claims to own it, is Too Many Poops. <laughs> so oh. take that for what it is. All right. Um, so in 2018, there was 4,090 entries. So I wanted to know, how many did Stronghold make? <laughs> How many uh, entries from 2018 come from Stronghold? Have fun, Eric. 102. <laughs> Crystal? I'm going to go with 28. Actually, the answer is 22. Wow. How about Asmodee? Oh, no. Now it's me first. <laughs> uh, there's 4,000 entries. So this uh -huh. is just, Admodee is listed as one of the publishers. Uh -huh. Oh, no. I'm going to say 189. That's probably really low, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Eric? 206. Crystal gets it. It's 52. Oh. Stronghold is oh. almost half as good as Asthma Day. <laughs> In many ways. All right. Let's jump to some top 10 lists here. All right. Here we go. 2018 is coming up. And we're doing 2019 is coming up. 2018 is already here. Many people are making New Year's resolutions. So you need to guess what the New Year resolutions are. I will save you the trouble. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number three resolution, I'm not going to have you guys guess. Uh, a euphemism for it would just be to get lucky. Um, so you don't have to okay. guess that one. Okay. But you can guess the rest <laughs> on this family-friendly show. <laughs> uh, who's first? Eric. No, it's Crystal, because you just told Eric to have fun with Asthma Day. I remember that. Yep. Okay. Uh, to lose weight. That's correct. That's the second one on the list. So that gives you two points. The farther down the list you go, you get more points. You're trying to think of the more obscure ones. I've what? Never that role till now. Oh, man. Eric, well, what do you care? You go second. To spend more time with the children. Oh, that's a good one. But most people already do that. No, I don't know. That's not on the list. <laughs> um, saving money. That's the number one, giving you one point. Uh, to get more exercise. That was uh, included with losing weight. With losing weight. Okay. To read more. Oh, that's on the list. That's the uh, fifth one. Five points for Eric. Um, to quit smoking. Ooh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the eighth on the list. Eight points. Uh, to watch less TV. I got to talk to the judges. No. Oh. <laughs> judges have ruled no on that one. Uh, I'm going to say get a new job. One more time to judge. No, <laughs> no close uh to get a promotion no how do you get a promote oh i guess you could try to get one ask for one uh start a new hobby oh yes that's 
The number six answer on the list. Oh. Eric, your last chance. <laughs> um. Um. To clean the house. Close, but no. So number one answer was save money. 53% of people said yes to that. This is 2018 resolutions, by the way. 45% uh, said lose weight or get in shape. 25% said get lucky. 24% said to travel more. 23% said to read more books, which is not quite the same as watching less TV, but they usually correlate. Plus I 22%, said read more books already. Huh? Plus yeah, I said, said read more books already. Yeah. The judges are confused. <laughs> Give them a break. Right, get a new skill, hobby, 21%, 16% said quit smoking, and 15% said to find love. Can you can you repeat the 21% again? You cut out. Just Buy right a there. house. Buy a house. Ah, okay. Ah. All right, so let's start with the losing weight and getting in shape. The top 10 countries where the Big Mac is the most expensive are what? Uh, these are in U.S. dollars, and if you also guess the very bottom of the list, I think it was like number 90 or something, I'll also give you points. You'll get 20 points if you guess that one. So in what country is the Big Mac at McDonald's the most expensive? And I get to go first on this one? You do. Let's say Japan. That's a good guess, but it is wrong. How about South Africa? Also a good guess. Also wrong. Eric. Norway. Norway is number four on the list. The Big Mac there, when this survey was taken, I think early 2018, is $5.22. Crystal. Uh, how about Iceland? Iceland would make a lot of sense, except I don't think I saw McDonald's there. Ah. It's not on the list anyway. I don't know. Sweden. Sweden is number two on the list. So two points for Eric. That's $5.83. The Netherlands. The Netherlands is not on the list. <laughs> Finland. No, but nice try on the Scandinavian yeah. trio there. <laughs> Seemed to make sense. Uh, for the record, I do know that uh, people in India don't eat cows and they are considered to be sacred. So I'm just saying I know that, but I'm going to say India. Well, I'm sure some people in India do. Remember, India is a, a plethora of religions. Well, I just wanted people to be aware that like, I get that that's possibly a silly answer. <laughs> it, I don't know if it is or not. It, I, it's oh, not on my list. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Saudi Arabia. That that seems like a good guess, and it is not correct. They how eat about, gold plated burgers. I don't know. Uh, how about Egypt? That's the lowest on the list. Twenty Wait. points for Crystal, really? and she wasn't even trying. A dollar really seventy five. <laughs> so if you want a Big Mac. At the pyramids, <laughs> get it. Oh, uh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, that ends what? that list. Okay, so <laughs> Switzerland is number one, then Sweden, then the USA, then Norway, then Canada, Denmark, Israel, Australia, Uruguay, Brazil. All right, so that was the uh, 2018 resolution, losing weight. <clears throat> How about for people saving money? Who are currently, as of a few months ago, the top 10 richest people in America? Is it me first? And Crystal, you're first. I don't have the poorest person in America on this list this time. <laughs> uh, how about Elon Musk? No. He's really? not on the list. No. Okay. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is on the list worth $84 million, number three. All right, Bill Gates. Bill Gates also on the list worth $90 million, number two. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos shockingly on the list. 
in the number one position at 112 million. Tim Cook. Wait, these might be billions. I'm sorry. I'm saying millions. I mean billions. <laughs> Tim Cook. Now, Tim Cook is just some schmo who works at Apple. <laughs> I don't. All right, whatever. He, he, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if he's on the list or not. I'm sure he's quite wealthy, but I don't know that I he don't owns know. it. <laughs> I pay a uh, lot for my iPhone, so he better be rich. <laughs> um. I'm running out of, of, of the big ones that I know. Uh, how about how about Oprah Winfrey? No, I'm pretty sure she's the richest woman alive, but there are no women in the top 10. Boo! I'm not condoning it, Crystal. I'm just I know, I'm booing the world, not you, Tom. I'm just booing the universe. <laughs> I'm gonna get there someday. Dice Tower people, mark it down. <laughs> it's possible that Crystal's the richest of the three of us. We don't know that. Maybe, maybe I'm a secret billionaire and nobody knows. You could be a thousandaire and be richer than me. You know what? Uh, you have a whole lot of kids and I have zero. So I would say there's a good <laughs> chance. <laughs> right. I thought you were about to attach a value to those kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're, you're rich in family and I am poor. All right, time's up. Number four was Mark Zuckerberg. Uh -huh. Oh. Then five and six were the Koch brothers, David and Charles. Okay. Seven was Larry Ellison. Eight, Michael Bloomberg. Nine, Larry Page. And ten, Sergey Brin. Those are Google guys. Sergey Brin, yeah. All right. So the other New Year's resolution was to travel more. What are the ten least visited states? <laughs> uh, there's actually 11 on the list because there was a tie for number six. Who's up first? You are. <laughs> Go for it, Eric. Alaska. No. Alaska actually is widely known to be visited because it, there's like a big tourist attraction there. South Dakota. South Dakota, sadly, is not on the list because you forgot about the Badlands. Oh, and it also, is that where the uh, the Corn Palace? No, and never mind. That's, some, that's Nebraska. Wait, Corn Palace? Is that? Whatever. I don't think the corn palace specifically, wherever it might be, will <laughs> like, like swing a state one way or the other. There's a bunch of tourist attractions all in that same area, like wherever I'm thinking. All right. of. Back to you, Eric. Iowa. Iowa is number three on the list. Iowa is lovely. I'm not saying they aren't lovely. They're the least visited states. I'm not see. yelling at you. I'm yelling <laughs> at the universe, Tom. <laughs> Uh, how about Minnesota? The Mall of America is there. Okay, no. Idaho. No. Oh, wait, no, yeah, it is. It's number nine, Eric. I apologize. That's nine points. That's amazing. Okay. Oh, good. How about Wyoming? No. I think a lot of people like to go see the... A lot of people like everything, apparently. <laughs> well. Um, how about North Dakota? North Dakota is on the list in the number four position. Uh, Kansas. Kansas is on the list in the number five position. I refuse to say the state next to it for the record. <laughs> you know, Kansas is like bordering six states or something. Okay, well, but if people know where I'm from, they'll know what I mean. <laughs> uh... How about Oregon? Oregon's beautiful. I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> All right. Time's up. Wait, but Eric got to go first. It's Fine. Not. Quick guess. Go. Connecticut. Yes. Number six. What? Tied with I am Rhode leaving. Island. Tied with Rhode Island. <laughs> All right. So number one is Nebraska. I've been there. It's true. <laughs> Number two is Delaware. Three, Iowa. Four, North Dakota. Five, Kansas. Six, a tie between Connecticut and Rhode Island. Seven, Mississippi. Eight, Oklahoma. Nine, Idaho. And ten, New Hampshire. What do you think the number one state is? Like the most visited? That's correct. It's got to be Florida. That's right. Yeah. With California number two and Hawaii number three. 
in your face. Where's All the right. I didn't go any farther. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Nevada's Las Vegas. That alone probably. <laughs> if, if Las Vegas wasn't in Nevada, I'm pretty sure Nevada would be number 50. Oh, yeah. No, there's, there's nothing else here of note. <laughs> All right. So what, we're on these, uh, uh, we're at lose weight. We're still in lose weight. Okay. What are the top eight? I only have eight here. The top eight ice cream brands in America. Uh, who's? It's You're me. first. Okay. Ben and Jerry's. That's number two. Briars. Briars is number one. Blue Bunny. Blue Bunny is number five. Edie's. Edie's is. I'm not sure what the difference is. Um, you cut out a little bit there, but I think, or is it my turn to guess? <laughs> well, I was saying Edie's is also known as Dryers, according to the thing. I wasn't sure. Oh, it, oh. it's regional. Yeah. Got it. Um, I'm going to go for a wild card. I'm actually going to say Skinny Cow. No, but I actually know what you're talking about. That was not in the top eight. Okay. Mm. Uh, Hagen does. Hagen does is number three. Um, just ice cream brands. Yes. Does that mean store bought only? Like, so I not. Don't, I don't know if the. Mm. I'm assuming it's store bought only. Okay. Um. Halo Top? No. Eric? Uh, Carvel? No. I just, I like Carvel. Okay, so number one is Briars. Number two is Ben and Jerry's. Three, Haggadahs. Four, Blue Bell. Five, Blue Bunny. Six, Turkey Hill, which is my personal favorite. I've never heard of that. What that's, is that? That's a Northeast regional one. Eric, yeah. yeah, yeah. Seven, Talenti. And eight, Edie's. All right. Uh, Talenti are those, like, super fancy ones. Let's now talk about ice cream. So the closest two without going over. No, no, not without going over. Just the closest two. How many pounds of milk are in a gallon of ice cream? Eric, you're first. Gallon of ice cream. Pounds of milk. Uh, it is. Don't do math. Just guess. I have I have my guess on my fingers just so it won't. Four. Not... Four pounds of milk. Four, Crystal. Eight. The answer is twelve. Crystal gets the points. Next question: How many pints of ice cream does the average American eat in a year? Oh no. Uh, I'm gonna say forty-one. Fifty-two. The answer is 48. Good job, Eric. Woo! The first ice cream parlor was opened in New York City. In what year? Eric. 1901. Crystal. I believe that the ice cream cone was 1906 in the World's Fair. I think I know that fact, maybe. So I'm actually going to go earlier. I'm going to go 18... 84. It's actually 1776. Oh, Whoa. Crystal. Whoa. Next question. Crystal, you're first. The ice cream cone was invented in St. Louis in what year? <laughs> 1906. Eric. At the World's Fair. Uh, 1905. It's actually 1904, ready. so Eric oh, gets no. the five points. Oh, no. I was so close. But look Tragedy. at this. Tragedy. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> Our last question of the day is, well, for Christmas, I made a mess of seafood because that's what you do at Christmas time. What are the top 10 consumed or, or ordered seafoods in America? If you're going to say fish, you need to be specific. And Eric, I get first, first stab at this. Shrimp. Mm -hmm. Shrimp is number one, giving you one point. Oh, right. Tilapia. Tilapia is number four. Salmon. 
Salmon is number two. If we were playing by normal rules, Eric would be rocking. Uh, I'm too good at this game. <laughs> uh, lobster. No, lobster's not in the top ten, which is sad. Clams. Clams is number 10, Eric. Now you got it. Oh, that's how we play. Okay. Uh, how about crawfish? No, crawfish is eaten in a very small, small subsection, I think. I know. I was ho hoping for lower on the list. Ah, yeah, good point. Oysters. No. Swordfish. No, but it's delicious. That's the, one of the only fishes that I will actually eat because it tastes like steak. It does not taste like fish. <laughs> Tuna. Tuna's number three. Eric's back to his normal ways. How about cod? Cod is number seven. Um, Last guess. Yeah. Uh, Ruffy. Orange Ruffy. That's really delicious, but not on the list. Crystal, your last guess. Uh, crab. Crab is number nine. Ah! <laughs> I almost said crab legs a long time ago. Forgot about it. I know I did too. Until right at the very end. And I was like, wait, we no one has said crab yet. <laughs> I think Crystal won this thing. We're counting anyway. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. We don't even know if this means anything yet. I have no idea what this means. Last time, Tom promised me a game and then never gave it to me. The game so. is still coming. Wait, I did give you a game, didn't I? You did, but then there was one that was in a pouch. It was a blue-orange game. And I was supposed to remind you to give it to me when I was there at the retreat, and then I forgot. You were supposed to remind me. You said, remind me every day until I give it to you, and then I forgot. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. All right. The score is 94 for Eric and 127 for Crystal. Woo! Closer than I thought it was. That was very sad wooing there. All right, well. Uh, Sometimes the chat complains about how loud I am, like in the after the <laughs> fact comments, and so I'm trying to be a little more subdued. <laughs> I'd like to point out that it's a little too late in the episode to start thinking about that now. <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm for the, you were always I, screaming about the disparity of a salary <laughs> of rich people that we have no hope of getting to, and people hating on the states that you, whatever you were yelled about there. I didn't yell. <laughs> it was yellish. I spoke emphatically. <laughs> All righty. Well, folks, we appreciate you coming around for Dice Tower tonight. We'll be doing a live top 10 tomorrow. It is our top 10 innovative games i think of the year of 2018 nice. so come back at one o'clock eastern standard time for that and we'll be doing another dice tower tonight eventually but it will not be till 2019 and it'll I be literally right before the cruise oh, literally that's is it literally right before the cruise yeah like we the well the cruise leaves on saturday it's the wednesday before got it all righty folks well, until next time i'm tom vassal i'm crystal pisano and i'm eric summerer thanks for watching Thank you for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. Tom, Crystal, and I will see you in the new year for another installment. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Tom, Crystal, and me, with assistance from Derek Porter and Rob Searing. That time the red-headed kid from Riverdale visited England and wouldn't stop tweeting about what he saw provided by Archie Texts of the West Kingdom. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at Board Game Geek on Facebook or Twitter or by emailing us at Dicetower at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at Dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have, have fun, fun gaming. gaming. Please tell me you didn't come up with that one. That I, was I didn't. That was that was a submission on the board game geek thread, and a great one. I'm sad. We <laughs> had to end the year with a bang, man. That was a bad bang. I have a new one for you, Eric. I'll have to tell you. Oh yes.